All right, today we're going over six supplements that you need if you're serious about building muscle. And one of these has been shown to put on pounds of muscle over the course of the year, but you got to take it in a very specific way. You can't just go all Wolf of Wall Street and start banging your chest. Are you sure about this? God, I told you, if you're serious about building muscle, you have to load your creatine for six days. Trust the science. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Now, are these gonna move the needle as much as waking up in the morning and drinking a half a glass of steroids? Or some of the pro-hormones they used to sell in the 90s that made you piss rainbow colors? No. But most of these fall in the category of things you should be taking because you're most likely lacking based upon how you live your dumpster life, and that can seriously hold you back. Like supplement number one, creatine. One of the most extensively studied supplements of all time, monohydrate. The rest are crap. What people fail to realize is it's simply just an amino acid you get from the food you eat. You store it in your muscles and it's one of your body's natural sources of energy for muscle contractions, but there's a threshold. Meaning that for those that have reached peak concentration in their muscle cells, creatine is about as useful as if you supplemented Cialis when you were 14. But for those that are below that threshold, which is most likely you, it makes perfect sense to take. But I wouldn't take it the way that most people recommend, which is with 50 grams of sugar, because then you're just gonna end up gobbling down Swedish fish after every workout and slowly turn into a fat mess. The way I would do it is load creatine for the first six to seven days, taking 20 grams, you split it into four separate doses. Then it would take five grams from then on out. Next up, vitamin D3. And this one's fascinating because it plays a role in everything from muscle protein synthesis, it can lead to increases in strength and overall testosterone levels, and it's unlike any other vitamin because it isn't a fucking vitamin. Structurally, it's actually closer to the super draw you used to eat like Tic Tacs when you were 17 years old. And just like creatine, those that are deficient will see the most benefit, which is good news because that's pretty much everyone. And if you think you can walk around your backyard butt-ass naked to get your daily dose, you're gonna have to walk around in midday sun for an hour. And if you have darker skin, Forget about it, you have to turn your ass into an easy bake oven. The ants will get your balls well before you get enough vitamin D. Your best bet is just get your levels checked and see how bad they are. But if you're too lazy to do that, there really is no serious risk in taking the upper limits of what they recommend, which is around four to 5,000 IUs. Look what I found. Prescription grade vitamin D. This is how you know it could kill you. Serving size, 50,000 IUs. Taken once a week. Next up, glutamine. Just kidding, it's actually crap. Most of it gets absorbed in your intestines, which is good for overall gut health, but that's not what we're doing here. Now these last three are ones that if you don't take them, I don't know what you're doing with your life, so I'll go through them quick. Caffeine. I've tried to kick this one a few times, but it has a detrimental effect on the intensity of my workouts. And if there's one thing that separates big people from not so big people, it's their ability to almost kill themselves during their workouts. Caffeine helps with that. Digestive enzymes. Now, your body creates these, but if you're serious about building muscle, then you're taking in more protein than your body comfortably wants to take in, so you need to supplement to make sure you can break down and utilize as much protein as possible. Fiber. Now, you may think this one's not related to building muscle, but one of the selling points is it slows down the absorption of nutrients, which helps maintain blood glucose homeostasis, which is important because the last thing you wanna do is be one of those guys at the gym that thinks they're really muscular, but they're actually fat. Also, your colon's a muscle and fiber helps it contract, so good luck getting that image out of your head. Mm -hmm. Programs are linked below.